What's up guys, Damien Keyes here. Welcome back to the channel and a big shout out to a new member of the family, which is this 1967 B25 Gibson Acoustic. We just felt like it needed some kind of musical reference behind in the shot. Plus we just needed to play some guitar. Nice. Anyway, more importantly, over the past couple of weeks, there's been a bit of a furore, a bit of an uproar, all based around royalty rates, especially on Spotify, which is known as one of the lowest paying streaming services out of all of the DSPs. And therefore, there has been a petition which has been signed by myself included, by thousands and thousands of musicians all across the world demanding fairer pay. They say, we demand at least one cent per stream. Now at the moment, Spotify pay 0.0032 cents per stream. So therefore, this is over treble. It's three times what is currently being paid, which I think is at least fair, but is this gonna work out for their business model? Let's dig in. So in case you live under a rock, Spotify's business model revolves around other people's music. It effectively licenses music. It doesn't own the music from you, the artist, or from the labels. And therefore, its income streams come from people paying a membership every single month for $9.99, $9.99 or £9.99. And then on top of that, it also has the ad revenue, which comes from the freemium version. So you don't have to pay for the music. What you can do is you can say, I'm not gonna pay for the music. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna listen to adverts every three or four songs, and therefore I'll get all of the music for free which effectively does belittle the music, but at the same point, you can have free music. Now, the issue with this is if you look at 2019 income for Spotify, 93% of all of its income came from members paying their subscription. So effectively, that 10 bucks a month times by all of their subscribers was 93% of its income, meaning only 7% actually came from the freemium version. Now, because of that, Spotify is the middleman. Effectively, Spotify is dealing with shareholders, artists, plus labels, including the big three, the biggest three labels in the world, and they have the biggest libraries. So unfortunately, while Spotify does want to have your music, it's kind of a bit more interested in Drake and Ed Sheeran and the Beatles, because that is going to be generating millions and millions of dollars or millions of pounds every single year from new and existing subscribers. So Spotify's growth has been exponential in the last 12 years. And in 2019, Spotify generated $7.5 billion. But one thing you might not know is that it spends $470 million on you, the artist, you, the writer, and also the labels. So in order to, to lease that music, that math is starting to not add up so well. Plus, Spotify knows that it doesn't own the music, and whilst it's got 50 million tracks on Spotify that you can listen to, so has Apple, so has Amazon, and so has every other DSP. So therefore, it needs a new gap in the market because Spotify's whole growth plan is how it stays afloat. It has to, it has to keep growing. If it's not growing, there's a huge problem. So it's spotted a gap in the market, which is podcasts. And in order to become the number one place for podcasts, it's invested $700 million and is continuing to invest with the likes of exclusive deals with Joe Rogan and the Kardashians and the Obamas and uh, DC Comics uh, and The Ringer. So all of these podcasts are costing a lot of money, but it does mean they have exclusivity, which is a lot more like the Netflix model. So this is a balancing act trying to keep the shareholders happy, the labels happy, the artists happy, and most importantly, the consumers happy because the consumers are paying their $10 a month and we can't lose those people. So what happens if we're trying to get 0.0032 royalty rate up to this one cent, one measly cent for every time someone streams? Well, the problem is, is all of the deals go out of kilter. All of them go out of sync. So in order to give you triple the amount for every single stream, it's got to come from somewhere. Something has to give. And the most likely place for that to happen is the consumer. 
because the shareholders aren't going to shift. We've already seen that Spotify have pretty much lost money year on year. So where's it going to come from? It's going to come from you, the Spotify consumer. You, the person who is actually paying the monthly subscription to Spotify. And in order for you to get one cent for a stream, it means that you're probably going to be paying, instead of $10 a month, $30 a month. So $30 a month, and instead of $120 over a year, you're going to be paying $350 for your music. Now, a lot of people have said one cent is not enough. It should be 10 cents per stream because that brings it in line with fairness and with what used to be where the CD is. The issue there is if you go from one cent to 10 cents, it becomes 10 times more. Now, who's going to be paying 300 bucks a month to listen to their music? Nobody. Even at one cent, you're going to have a massive churn rate. The churn rate is the amount of people who will leave Spotify or will leave Deezer because they say it's not worth it. I can't afford that. I can't afford 30 bucks every month for my music. Now, from your point as an artist, you might say, hey, I'll pay my 30 bucks if it means we all get fair play. And I understand that. But we have to deal with people who aren't artists. We have to deal with people who've come from an era, from Napster, from MySpace, from YouTube, where they are used to getting things for free, where they haven't had to go to the shop to buy a CD, where they haven't had to buy music. And so if we force music underground, then all of a sudden music becomes free again as we have all of these capabilities to get music for free if we want to. Should we choose to, we can listen to music for free, but Spotify and these other DSPs well, they make it easy for us, so therefore, it's the path of least resistant. Fine, I'll give you a tenner and I'll get all the music for free and I know that I'm doing the right thing. But if that goes to 20 or 30 or 40 bucks a month, no, of course I'm not going to pay that. I'll find another way. So Spotify know they have one shot, which means they have to carry on growing. In order to appease everybody, Spotify needs to grow, but not in ads yet. They need to grow in subscriptions because that's where the money's at. In order to please their shareholders, in order to please the labels, there's this partnership by default. Now this is a colossal, massive problem that is about to explode within the next couple of years. Because of the business model, the structure, the labels, if everything carries on going as planned, everything is great. But one tiny tweak and all of a sudden, the house of cards could come tumbling down. And it looks like it may well do. So join me on Thursday where I will be telling you what I think is about to happen to Spotify within the next five years. This could be the toughest two to three years of Spotify's life and Daniel Ek knows it. And now we know it as well and that makes us a lot more powerful. So join me on Thursday, but up until then, thanks for listening. If you do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, come and be a part of this community. And if you want to work more closely with me on a one-to-one -one basis, then as usual, check out DK Music Business Academy. The link is in the description below. It's a chance that we can work together on your music. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.